moment and share anything that seemed familiar and, well, John will let you decide whether you want mm -hmm. to work or, or talk with Mary that will work as well. What I'd like you to do is think about what from this experience seems similar to something you currently do or this is what you do and what you might have gained from this experience that might be worth trying and are there any questions that you generated about this approach? So take a moment to chat with each other about just having this 10 minute snapshot of this one teacher's experience with student to student assessment. That's what I'm thinking about like this year, what, what how is that gonna work and how like how would I keep this momentum that I built up at the beginning of the school year or yeah, the beginning of the school year to get them to do you know, conversations like this. I noticed that yeah. this was a game because I knew this was you know, fun. Is that guy cute or not? <laughs> yeah. I'll have a bunch of girls that that'll literally take on makeup. Right. And she had time to have this conversation. Whereas if you're not going to take I'm not the teacher that has to take it. I don't want to take your stuff and you have to just tell me that. Yes, but yeah, yes, that. Yes, that. Yes, that. Yes, that. Yes, Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Well, let me pick up something that Mary just said about having it, uh, focusing on how much time you focus on homework. What I don't know, because again, we don't have this teacher in front of us, but I was very curious whether then from this conversation, again, we were talking about she, she's on a block schedule, so she right. has 88 minutes, so providing this kind of time at the beginning seems fun, but I was curious at how then she goes from this into whatever the day's lesson is and how she seamlessly kind of falls into that so that the homework becomes your introduction set to whatever you're gonna do that day. So again, you're picking up those formative clues so that you can lead in. And, and again, without her here for us to, to uh, ask her questions, it's kind of hard to know um, what's going on. I'm just kind of curious of like the 40 minutes of people do have 40 minutes. Do you always do a lesson every 40 minutes? Is it like, is your, your curriculum so packed that you have to do a lesson per class? Well, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or it's, um, and if it's a longer lesson, it's a split lesson. Right. You do it over two days, but right. yeah, we're packed. It's like instructional. But instructionals, I mean, put it in for right. because as long as people are learning, this is what's important. Yeah. And I'm hoping, I hope that the common core coming in, that we will come out of some of this lock stuff and that you'll have some breathing space. But well, yeah. her homework was very meaningful. Like, I, I confess, my, I give some very drill-based homework. Mm -hmm. And hers was meaningful. Hers was something you could actually talk about. Besides the fact, oh, you distributed wrong. Okay. I wonder if you could mix the two, though, after right. saying a Jenny, like, still give those, because some of the students need that, but then we give them more of these rich problems. Right, and we just, just like some unsafe. We should have a teacher who would have basically one problem. Right. And we recap the previous night's homework, and then it's the last night. It just worked on that one problem all over right. here, and, and then right into the practice. And it was just right. wonderful how we got to. No, That's absolutely, and, and, and these are the great things we're thinking about, but this is what I like about these examples, because they do help us think about, well, what do I give them? How could this be interesting? Can I give them something that I can actually use the next day that will help me understand and engage them in the conversation? Because I was looking at that power of the conversation they were having and how much she threw back to the students. Um, because at any moment, she could do a small teaching at any time. So if the kids couldn't figure out the two sentence equations, there was still an argument of how you get to 94, she could have retaught at that moment. And, but again, she allowed the students that opportunity to share and her environment, that classroom environment looks so wonderfully uh, comfortable for the kids to be able to say, I didn't know what I was doing. And that was okay to say that because we usually don't feel like we should ever reveal that we didn't do so well. I think videotaping the kids is phenomenal too. I think that for me, if I did that every now and then, that would help the classroom manage. Actually, <laughs> well, no, you know, well, not only with it's a good idea, but also there oh, yeah. is a, I, there is a probe from the book that these come from, where you actually take snapshots of the students working. And then you give them their snapshot and ask them to do a recall on what they were what mathematically they were thinking about. So there's cool. actually a way to use, and you could even do a video segment of mm -hmm. conversation. So I think there's lots of interesting possibilities. Again, as we're planning when, and then mm -hmm. again, how uh, difficult or hard would it be to do the strategy? One thing about the strategies I gave you, it said, was it you know high involvement, low to get it? You know, so something that's more complex, like pictures or video would take a little more time, so you have to decide when you'd really want to do that kind of thing. But there are possibilities for this, which is exciting as well. Here's a question, so let me let me have you think about it. So on A, B, or C. So my teacher told me that. Okay. <laughs> I think in this case it's correct. Actually, actually there was the several research studies to look at this issue. 
about what's educative for kids, what helps them make progress in their learning and make connections. And so the researchers actually actually did sort of four or five different mutations on this, but I kind of summed it down. But so do they make more learning progress if they you know get their paper and pass the grade? Uh, they get a paper or in the circulation, you're orally giving feedback, or you have your marginal comments that you've placed, or they get a grade and those marginal comments. So, um, who wants to venture? Uh, we have Joe saying all the above. <laughs> I say B. So you say I think B yeah. for the low level, they'll just yes. <laughs> you see that grade on there and then they true. shut down. Okay. Well, I think students know already where they are. So, them getting a bad grade is not going to inspire them to do any better. They already know how they're sorted. Right. They know who's doing better, doing better than the other one. Right. So feedback is, I think, you see the most growth with that. You know, so just that thing on a letter grade on it as well. I tend to come from the stance like, uh, yeah, the mixed students that are like that low, but then if they're working together, and if they have, um, excuse me, if they're working together and they they all come to a consensus, um, then it's a group grade, and usually that grade, mm, I guess most of the majority of the time they've gotten the question correct because they've worked as a group and that grade is a higher grade. And because for my lower students, as soon as they get, oh, I've actually gotten A. And that motivates. Sure. But that's where I came from. <laughs> so you know, and that's okay. And we, and, we, and we can talk about this strategy in just a moment too, Joe. Actually what the research found, for some of the very reasons that you talked about, that it is B. Now, you have to be careful about how you write your feedback. Because saying good job, that, well, sure, right. that's really great, but it didn't tell me anything I needed to know. And just to remind you, because I, I know for some of you who did have this book from last year, there actually is a really nice chapter on feedback. To, there's two feedback chapters, but the second mm -hmm. one uh, actually does a very nice job at how to provide both oral and written feedback so that students are learning, because we won't have enough time today to talk about those kinds mm -hmm. of things here. But what they found is that when, you're right, when students just receive the grade, whether it's the grade by itself or C, grade and marginal comments, in their mind, a grade is summative, done, doesn't matter. Yes. And yeah. that's why for a lot of you, and it, you think of this, you're not English teachers, but your English teachers will say, because they have taken pains to write all over the margins, the kids throw them away on the way out of the classroom, their paper hits the basket, it kills them because they were trying to help the students become better writers. But that grade, we have conditioned, we are all conditioned to see the grade, that is my final summation, that's who I am, I'm going. So the problem with grades is we have a lot of ego involved in it. Good, bad, or ugly, we've got it involved. And so what happens is we do, we just say that's it, we're done, finished, I'm never looking again. If you really want students to learn, and one of the things about formative assessment is to just provide the oral or written feedback in ways that are gonna be helpful for them, that actually really helps students learn more and put together more ideas, build their schema, their brain uh, connections, and begin to understand uh, what's going on. So that kind of leads us to you know, this other fact, and, and the feedback also allows the students to kind of think about themselves. And in a way, Joe, when you're doing your experience, although you're giving it a grade at some point, uh, I think that the process oh, is helping your students, no, I think your process with your students is helping them have some ahas plus the motivation of, oh my gosh, maybe I can do this. Because if the group has been supportive, because part of this conversation that we have with our students or engaging them is to help them either reach consensus or prediction or something to gather. And that process is, is very um, important as we go. But again, we're trying to help students do this idea of reflecting and thinking about themselves as learners. So in a way, they're kind of always addressing, like, what is it I'm trying to learn? So where am I going? Where am I now? So what do I know? This is, uh, you'll notice, if for some of you that have looked at the Heritage book, she talks about the gap, you know, the gap. My gap between what I know and where I need to go, and can I keep that gap as a teacher? You're trying to keep that gap narrow. That's that wonderful zone of proximal development of Vygotsky. You're trying to keep that narrow learning gap narrow so that you don't have it looking so big that your kid says, oh, I'm never making, I'm never going to be able to learn all this stuff and, and all of that. And then, after I know this, where am, I, where am I heading? Where are we going? And 
so this feedback and formative assessment helps address this for students and helps build in some reflection uh, for them as well. I'll let you absorb this one for a moment. By itself, no. If they don't have something to attach this to, feedback's going to mean nothing. There's nothing for them to attach it to um, as well. Uh, they're going to kind of give you that, either the, as I call it, the deer in the headlights <laughs> moment uh, and, uh, as well, or they just shut down. You know, the kid with the head on the, on the desk because they checked out, you know, two minutes into your period and you're frustrated, but there they are. Right? I don't get when that would happen. Yeah. What? Can you give me a scenario of something that I would do wrong as a teacher? Wrong? To, to do that, where she said, or. There's little use. It is of little use when there's no initial learning or surface information. It's like it's surface, surface information. Stuff. Surface information would be the basic. We talk about blooms, it would just be sort of that beginning idea. So there's uh, just some, some general so, ideas about it. So, like concept. as a teacher, what would I be doing wrong if I, if I gave. Feedback? Yeah, if I gave feedback the wrong. They have they, they don't have anything to attach it to its mm -hmm. meaningless. Um, so uh, tell me a tell me a, a well, it's, just, you, it's just like me going to you and saying you drove that motorcycle really well. Do you ride a motorcycle? No. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly right. So the so my giving you feedback or gee, you know, Patty, when you ride that motorcycle you know, make sure that you have purchased this particular kind of jacket so if you fall off, you won't get injured by the friction as you're sliding down the highway. Um, uh, that feedback to you, if you've ever been on a bicycle, remember, a motorcycle oh, bicycle, and then, and then maybe you've had the bad accident or even a mild accident, you don't, it, it doesn't mean anything because you don't have any experience. It doesn't mean you can't imagine, but you still don't have quite that experience. It doesn't mean anything versus, you decided you want to ride a motorcycle, you've taken the safety classes, you're out, and now that we're talking about, gee, when you go into the turn, make sure you do this with your body. You know, when you when you do a stop, make sure you do this. Do you know what to do when the light won't turn red at one of those demand on demand lights? You can wait two minutes and then you can turn. Uh, so <laughs> the student's paper clearly indicates they have no idea what they're doing, they have no, You'd be better off with no feedback because no. there is nothing. No, no, that's can... not that's not what this means. This this because I'm trying to tie it to no, I okay because I'm only right. going to give feedback on math related things. Absolutely, no, 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 I know that. And this what this is trying to say to you is make sure instruction is important. Okay, it doesn't disappear. So all these feedback oh. stuff, all this formative assessment probes, they can't stand on their own. Gotcha. So you in your instruction, your instruction combined with good feedback, it's going to strengthen learning. So now one of the things they will tell you though, Mary, if you have a student whose paper is a disaster, I mean, if you look at it and it's really hard for you right. to even find, one of the things that you're reading about how to give feedback to students, they will tell you not to pick on everything there because that's also problematic for students to just keep reading a negative comp well even right. if it's even if you've written positive guidance but right. they can still see the, the sum of all of it says you know, get messed up you don't know what you're talking about right. so how you <laughs> want to then craft where you want to go and it also could be a circumstance because there is also a formative assessment probe which some of you have used because uh, it's a normal sort of a normal thing which is if you have some papers like that chances are instead of writing something you're actually going to want to talk right. to students mm -hmm. and say can you tell me what happened when you approached your homework? What went on? So you can find out what confused them uh, about it, because they may have tried to complete it, but 
and then didn't know how to undo anything that they have. So you use other strategies okay. as well. But this Thank is trying you. to remind us that the combination of uh, uh, instruction with feedback is a very powerful combination for you and for your students. So that's what that is going to remind us of a little bit. We did talk about it being ungraded. 